it was my extraordinary privilege to have played a role in one of the epic dramas of our age, America's race to the moon and back. President Biden and Vice President and Chair of the National Space Council, Harris, now join a distinguished train of visionary leaders. As President John F. Kennedy so inspiringly said at Rice University, William Bradford speaking in 1630 of the founding of the Plymouth Bay Colony said that all great and honorable actions are accompanied with great difficulties and both must be enterprised and overcome with answerable courage. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energy and skills. Because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept, one that we are unwilling to postpone, and one which we intend to win, and the others too. It is for these reasons that I regard the decision last year to shift our efforts in space from low to high gear as among the most important decisions that will be made during my incumbency in the office of the presidency. Yet the vows of this nation can only be fulfilled if we in this nation are first, and therefore we intend to be first. In short, our leadership in science and in industry, our hopes for peace and security, our obligations to ourselves as well as others, all require us to make this effort to solve these mysteries, to solve them for the good of all men and to become the world's leading space-faring nation. I salute the chain of White House and NASA leaders, the torch of space exploration lit by President Dwight Eisenhower and passed to John F. Kennedy and from him to Lyndon Johnson, Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, William Clinton, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, Donald Trump and Vice President and National Space Council Chair Mike Pence and to their worthy successors, the Honorable Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. 
Now let us salute the memories of those who so heroically sacrificed their lives for the achievement of an impossible dream. Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Jaffe, who perished in the command module fire of Apollo 1, January 27, 1967, and whose mission patch we deposited on the moon. Let us recall to those who sacrificed their lives on Columbia and Challenger and all others, American and Russian, who heroically paid their highest price Rest in peace. It was not a trivial risk. President Nixon had a draft speech prepared. In the event of moon disaster against the contingency of the failure of America's promise to return us safely to Earth, which required that the lander ascent engine depart the moon's surface and maneuvers to join the Earth returning spacecraft for ocean recovery. An ascent engine failure would have left us stranded on the moon. Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery. But they also know that there is hope for mankind in their sacrifice. We planted the American flag on the moon. We did so not to lay an imperial claim to the moon. As idealistic Americans, we came in peace for all mankind. Then, at the sure hands of our valiant command module pilot, Mike Collins, we three skedaddled back home, welcomed in the Pacific by the crew of the USS Hornet, safely back on Earth, then back home to America and our family. On behalf of all of the early space pioneers, let us now tip our helmets to our heroic and worthy successors, President Biden and Vice President Harris, NASA Administrator, U.S. Senator, and fellow astronaut Bill Nelson, Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy, and Associate Administrator Robert D. Cabana. We also recognize the work of General Lester Lyles and James J. Miller, Executive Secretary of the Space Council, UAG. Let me also salute the achievements of human 
exploration of space by private enterprise with the support of the U.S. government, especially those who aspire to send people past the Kármán line, such as SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Virgin Galactic. And especially we salute the young men and women astronauts, scientists, and technicians now picking up the torch of deep space exploration, the return to the moon via the inspiring Artemis project, whose thrilling, flawless launch and return I witnessed on TV, laying the groundwork for the colonization of the moon, a giant leap toward Mars. And if the imagination, intrepidness, and courage of the American people for space continues apace onto the exoplanets of our stars. In the words of Dr. Paul M. A. Leinbarger, the distinguished American Defense Intelligence Agency officer, godson of the great founder of Republican China, Dr. Sun Yat-sen, and visionary science fiction writer, America says to its friends, allies, and even rivals, we will help each other to change the destiny of worlds. Thank you, and God bless America, Earth, our galaxy, universe, and the celestial metaverse. It is our mutual high privilege to explore.